All right, let's get right into it. Google has just completely changed the way we talk to AI. I mean, forget typing into a box and just waiting. The new Gemini update is designed to see, hear, and actually hold a conversation with you in real time. And believe me, this isn't just another upgrade. It's a fundamentally new kind of interaction. To really wrap your head around what's different, think of it like this. The old way of talking to AI was kind of like sending letters. You'd type out a prompt, send it off, wait for a response, and then you'd have to start the whole thing all over again. It was clunky, you know, turn-based. This new way, it's like a phone call. It's a totally seamless, fluid conversation where you can talk, listen, and respond naturally, all at the same time. And yeah, I know, it sounds like something straight out of a movie. But this ability for an AI to see through your camera, listen to your voice, and talk back instantly? Well, it's being rolled out as we speak. This is happening right now. The future we've all been talking about is finally starting to show up. So how in the world did Google pull this off? Well, it wasn't just one magic trick. It came down to two core breakthroughs that let this AI perceive the world a lot more like we do. And first, they had to totally rethink how it listens. The first piece of the puzzle is something they're calling native audio. See, before, when you spoke to an AI, your voice had to get converted to text, then the AI would generate a text response, and then that text was converted back into speech. That whole three-step process is exactly what caused those annoying delays and the kind of robotic voices. Now, it's direct audio to audio. The model hears you and speaks back, which is why it sounds so incredibly natural and responsive. Okay, the second breakthrough is visual guidance, and this is where things get really wild. The AI can now use your camera to see your physical world, but it doesn't just see it. It understands objects, it can identify what you're looking at, and it can even draw on your screen to point things out to you. So instead of trying to describe a problem, you can just show it. Let's make this super concrete. Imagine you're staring at a car engine and you have no clue what you're looking at. You just point your phone's camera at it. Gemini can literally draw a box around a specific part on your screen and say, hey, that's the alternator and here's what it does. That's the real practical power you get when you combine sight with conversational AI. And the speed, it's just staggering. We're not talking about seconds here. The response time is measured in milliseconds. It's so fast that you can actually interrupt the AI mid-sentence and it'll pivot instantly just like a person would. That's what really shifts this from being just another tool to being a true conversational partner. So, okay, the tech is seriously impressive, but what can you actually do with it? This is where we shift from the theory to the real world, because Google also handed developers the tools to make these AIs not just talk, but take action. They've done this with something called the Agent Development Kit, this thing lets developers build AI that doesn't just give you answers, it actually does things for you. Just think about asking it to book a meeting or run a piece of code or even analyze a video for you. The conversation now leads directly to action, which turns the AI into a legitimate assistant. Now, what does this actually mean for businesses? Well, take customer service. The whole please wait on hold model could be replaced by instant, intelligent problem solving. Or for content creators, can you imagine having an AI research assistant feeding you info while you're live on stream? The applications here are just massive, and they're going to reshape entire industries. And it's not just about live interaction. You can now give Gemini a single video URL, and in a matter of seconds, it can analyze hours of footage. It can give you a summary, it can translate it, it can pull out super specific details. This ability to instantly understand video is a genuine superpower for anyone who's doing research or trying to learn something new. Okay, let's zoom out for a second and look at the bigger picture, because an update this huge doesn't just change one product, it sends shockwaves across the entire tech industry. To really get the impact, just look at the timeline. Two years ago, we had pretty basic text-only chatbots. Today, we have real-time, multimodal AI that can see and hear, the next logical step, based on everything we're seeing, is connecting this incredible intelligence to robotics, creating AI companions that can actually interact with the physical world. This move also puts enormous pressure on the competition. I mean, in a world where one AI can see, hear, and talk in real time, the old text-based models suddenly feel, well, kind of primitive. Google has just raised the bar, and now everybody else in the AI space is playing catch-up. But this isn't just about corporate rivalries. There's a really profound human side to all of this. This technology has massive implications for accessibility. 
Think about it. For someone with a visual impairment, a motor difficulty, or a language barrier, an AI that you can just talk to and show things to, that breaks down some huge technological walls. So where do we go from here? We are literally watching the beginning of a brand new era for artificial intelligence, one where it stops being a novelty and starts being a genuinely helpful part of our everyday lives. For any business owner or entrepreneur out there, this is a massive wake-up call. The opportunity to weave this level of AI into your customer service, your product design, your internal workflows, it's immense. The ones who adapt first are going to gain a huge advantage. And frankly, those who wait risk getting left behind. And that really brings us to the final thought. We've successfully given AI the senses of sight and hearing and the ability to speak our language. That barrier between the digital world and our physical world is getting thinner and thinner. So the truly profound question we're all left with is this. What happens next when we teach it how to act, when we give it hands?